Hello everybody, it is Thursday at noon, welcome to the Sanctuary at First Presbyterian Church and to our 1889 Edmund Giesecker organ owned by the Evansville chapter of the American Guild of Organists. I'm going to play mostly old music today, uh, starting with a piece by Johann Kubel, then our old friend J.S. Bach, and then moving into music from North America, uh, mostly in New England, uh, from the turn of the 19th century and the end of the 18th century. So without further ado, here is the Fantasia in G minor by Johann Puffelbell. This is one of the very first pieces I learned on organ, and uh, it's always nice to go back and see what your teacher uh, wrote in your copies uh, back then when you were being taught as a young person. I think I was around 13 or 14 at the time, and it is laden with fingerings uh, from my teacher, James Parsons, to whom I owe a great debt of gratitude. And it's wonderful to see that he was very forward-looking, and his fingerings are definitely um, still very relevant today. So, Johann Pachelbel's Fantasia in G minor. moving around all sorts of interesting harmonic areas, Bach does the same in his E minor invention. It's in two parts, and you'll hear again, as with all of these inventions, and sort of plays upon the musical material as it moves from place to place and from key to key.
perhaps the most jolly of them all, the invention number eight in F major. And now a chorale prelude from the Orgelbuchlein by J.S. Bach, Liebste Jesu, Wir sind Herr. Dearest Jesus, we are here to listen to you and to your word. Guide our minds and desires to the sweet teachings of heaven, so that our hearts may be completely drawn from earth to you. One of the interesting features of this chorale prelude is the presence of the canon in the right hand. So what happens is that the right hand leads off with the melody. And two beats later, in the same hand, the exact notes come, but down a perfect fourth. Now it's a little bit slower than that, but I just wanted to point that out so you can follow the tune along in both places as it happens. Of course, this being Bach, there are a few little ornaments and he dresses things up a little bit. Um, also, it's really designed to be played on two separate keyboards. Um, I don't have that here, so I'm just going to play the right hand up an octave so that it doesn't bump into the left hand.
there now some music written here in America? Um, all, the next four pieces I'm going to play are all by uh, American composers, some of whom might have been brought, born abroad, uh, but certainly lived the bulk of their lives and did the bulk of their work uh, in the United States. Starting with a composer called William Selby, uh, who lived from 1739 to 1798. And in all of this music, I feel the presence of Handel uh, very clearly. Uh, he was hugely influential, and um, the best of this stuff, you can definitely imagine uh, Handel writing or uh, certainly influencing. So uh, Selby was born in London, who emigrated to Newport, Rhode Island in 1773, and was the organist of Trinity Church there. Um, he became the organist of Trinity Church in Boston in 1776, and of King's Chapel in 1782, where he remained until his death. It says that he was active as a teacher and impresario, and he organized one of the first concerts of sacred music ever to be given in Boston. And his compositions were published in both London and Boston. So starting with a jolly little jig by William Selby. Andante by a composer called William Carr, sorry, Benjamin Carr, who lived from 1769 to 1831. Carr, again, was born in London, but he moved to Philadelphia in 1793, maybe earlier, along with his father and brother. There, as a family, they established a successful musicing, music publishing enterprise, and Carr was active as a singer, pianist, and organist and was a prolific composer of popular and patriotic songs. These included the well-known Hail Columbia, arranged from a march which had been popular in the revolutionary period. This piece is not uh, quite as jolly as that. It's a more gentle andante, um, but it has some really quite beautiful movement in it and uh, is played on the eight-foot principle. Um, Curiously, there's a note which uh, is beyond the range of almost all manuals. Uh, fortunately, we have some low notes in the pedal, and I'll just pop that one in uh, uh, using, using the pedal at the end.
And now, a little fugue by Charles Zoyner, who lived from 1795 to 1857, otherwise known as Heinrich Christoph Zoyner, and he was a native of Saxony who came to Boston in 1824, where he had become organist of the Park, St. Uh, the Park Street Church and later of St. Paul's Church. He was also organist for the Handel and Haydn Society and in 1854 moved to Philadelphia. He composed many anthems, organ collections, and an oratorio called The Feast of Tabernacles. We return to a more substantial piece by William Selby. Uh, it's a voluntary in A major, and again, it follows a fairly standard formula of a sort of grand introduction, uh, followed by a fugue, or what we sort of sort of fugue, certainly not in the way that Bach thought uh, sort of intellectualism fugue, but the same uh, musical material does keep coming back, and in various keys, and there are various episodes, and uh, we work our way to the end.
So thanks again for joining me this Thursday lunchtime. I hope uh, you've heard some music to brighten your day. And uh, do join us on Sunday morning for our live streamed worship services. Have a wonderful weekend.